Hello Internet. This is going to be a sad day for Gigabyte owners. Specifically those who are getting similar note of death from the RMA Center that shows PCB broken box checked. And you wonder why. The answer is simple. Cards today get bigger, heavier and most of us simply don't realize the stress applied to the PCB trying to hold all of its weight. Wasn't this a problem with large cards in the past? Well, in the past, we didn't give a flying frying pan about green technology, so we built things to last. Now everything is either environmentally friendly or politically correct, so that no one gets mad. Except for the owner of this card. No one cares about you out there, but I do. I'm here to save you from lowest quality settings, 30 FPS, 640p gaming on the integrated Intel CPU, while your card is aimlessly circulating around the country looking for that one weirdo who has nothing better to do with his life but to fix GPUs. Welcome to my world, buddy. Enough crying, let's get to business. This era of death saved me hours of diagnostics, so let's get straight to it. The repair process here is pretty straightforward. Basically, we need to dig as far as the crack goes. At some point of drilling, I would stop and I would polish the area to see if the crack is starting to fade away. And if it doesn't, I'll continue on. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. Okay, I think this is where I'm going to stop. I can still see some delamination, but they are at a different level, uh, making me believe that the crack is removed. I will insulate the layer below with soldering masks so that the soldering wire will not be accidentally touching the bottom layer. The wire I'm using is 0.02 millimeter in diameter. That's the wire to use. And the way I solder it on is I like to have the board hot while I'm soldering, so that way solder sticks nice and clean. I also don't run wire straight across, and the reason why I'm doing this is to give me a plenty of free play. It helps me guide the wire to where I want it to go, and it also prevents heat from going from one end of the wire to another end, potentially desoldering it by accident. This method isn't always possible, but if it is, I'm doing it. I will now take a close look at every solder joint, uh, making sure that there are no accidental connections anywhere. And hopefully this is all there is. Continuing with the measurements, 12 volt kilo ohms, 3.36K, 1.8, 1.1K, PEX with four ohms, five volt, 1.7K, second five volt, 3K. These three are 12 volt with kilo ohms memory with 34 ohms uh, looking good so far so let's power it on and see what it does start with 5 volt 1.8 core memory and packs perfect now what is absolutely critical after such repair is to check every face for the core so i'll do that real quick what i'm looking for is any abnormal signals or noise and i don't think i have anything so we're looking good I think it's now safe to plug it in to a PC and I will temporarily place it on top of the heatsink and hold it down so that I don't have to assemble the whole card, you know, because I'm lazy. If it boots, we will run the memory test to save some time and wiggle the PCI Express slot to make sure nothing goes wrong while we uh, apply stress to the board. Here you can see me wiggling the slot and everything seems to be okay, no problems. 
that means I can now apply a mask over these wires get that cured and I will also drop a little drop of epoxy on top of that as well once epoxy is cured I will apply one last layer of solder mask and this is the result I think this looks pretty nice so let's put it together and run some more tests Everything seems to be working fine. I had no crashes or artifacts under maximum load. Temperatures were looking suspiciously low for some reason, but who knows? Maybe 3090s are not as hot as we heard. Wink wink. I ran superposition benchmark test and it gave me a very funny score. Just under 6k. Everything here looks good. My motherboard only supports PCI Express 3.0 so no problems there and then I looked at the core clock and it's only one third of what it's supposed to be okay let's fix that by flipping the switch on the card from 1070 to 3090 mode and try again some of these cool cards have these switches that turn them into a vegetarian they call it a silent mode I call it a vegetarian mode Fire up for Mark and a GPU Z to confirm, and bam! We now have a full clock speed. Yippity do! I also reran the superposition, and now it gave me this score, which is a lot better. Then I ran the valley, which for some reasons got cloudy and rainy and dark, just like it is outside right now, and that meant only one thing. It's time for me to end this video with the reminder that I have most of my supplies and equipment listed in the description, if you're interested. If you need a repair, contact information is also there. And don't forget to hit the like button, post a comment, and subscribe for more repairs. Have a blessed day and goodbye!